Ben's sitting in the bed. Look at this guy. Work him up, bud. Oh, here, here comes one. It's gonna get shot right here. I didn't want to interfere, but I wanted to see it. Well, yeah. that's a pretty fitting start for the Dan and Paul video, I'd say. <laughs> We're going to meet Dan. We're about three, minute, three miles from his house. Don't know what the plan is for today, but some boys out doing a deer drive and they're shooting at him. I think they knocked down a doe, it looked like. And that's the, our plan for today, too. We're going to be doing deer drives with Dan. As far as where in the world we're going to be, what we got ourselves into, I don't know. We asked Dan if we needed a wetsuit or life jackets or what we needed. Hillside we're lost already. On we're not even in the woods yet. Of a mile. But it should be an interesting day. That got me fired up. I was part of a drive already this morning. <laughs> a successful one. <laughs> I looked over and she was just running. Well, I was, I was watching like, that guy in that in that truck with like whatever he had going there. I don't know. Did he have a lazy boy in that thing? With, like walls <laughs> to shoot up? They had stairs going into the bed yeah, of the truck yeah, with I a lazy it. boy and the guy was sitting in the bed of it. And then all of a sudden they kept <laughs> popping up on that. They had that thing surrounded. Jeez. Those deer didn't stand a chance. Just shot. <laughs> Get sighted in. Oh, we're just pulling up and Dan's already shooting. You guys have a long ride? Only an hour. You get one already? Oh, it's just a box. <laughs> we already got to be in on a deer drive. Did you? <laughs> got to film it, it was pretty funny. Cool. But this is my buddy Aaron here. How hey, you doing? Nice to meet you. He's gonna run around the marsh with us today. Cool. I never uh, I never uh, hunted with an AR before. Yeah. And the way I was shooting with this thing, I thought, you know, I'm gonna give it a try. Yeah. It's pretty impressive how flat I can shoot and how far out I can shoot accurately. Yeah, yeah. But uh, the biggest issue was I shot a doe. I shot it like eight times before it went down, but it was dead. Yeah, it was you know, probably it's not, it's dead not, before right. it. Yeah. It's just that the, the power of like a 308 wow. knocks the thing over, yeah. but it's still dead. The hydro shock just isn't quite there. Damn, what should I wear for boots? Uh, you're gonna need to get wet so I've got hip waders and I've got knee boots what would you reckon? Can you walk long distance in waders? I think so. I'd wear the waders. Okay. I get I wear these boots and it, it's how I step. When you go through cattails you step over them and onto the roots the like this yeah. and you're safe most just, of the time but I usually end up with a boot full and it is pretty cold today. I don't know if you're familiar with cattails the big thing you got to look out for is if there ain't no cattails in a spot don't mm -hmm. step there. <laughs> Stay with the cattails because yeah. if it can't support a cattail root yeah there might not be a bottom. Uh -huh. <laughs> this guy went hunting with his dad, and his dad is in his 80s. Uh -huh. And they went out on a, in the swamp to do a drive, and they took his dad out there. And his dad went through in a bad spot, all the way up to his armpits. And they couldn't pull him out every time they tried. They were going in, and they were afraid he was going to get hypothermia. Put plywood beside him and tried to pull him out with, while standing on plywood. They still couldn't get him out. He's in there like a half an hour. So then they went back and got a snowmobile and put a strap around him and literally pulled him out with the snowmobile and he came out with no boots, no socks. <laughs> <laughs> no underwear. <laughs> Those will be found sometime by an archaeologist. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, Dave, uh, Greg, you, Jake, we'll all drive around. Uh, the rest of you can wait here. The rest is just you, right? Yeah, I'm going to wait by myself. <laughs> and you're, I'm driving. Yeah. <laughs> Dave will hunt right here. You might be able to see what he does from the next hill. Now what we do with the ladder is we put it like this if you want to shoot that way. So you can sit on it with a leg on Straddle each side. It. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Alright, Jake, if uh, you want to sit on the tripod, he'll sit on the ladder. The ladder, uh, normally we use that for the cattails because we sink it into the first rung on each side in the muck and use it to get above the cattails. But here we're just trying to get elevated enough so that we can see over this high grass and have an ethical shot downward. Because otherwise a lot of times you can't shoot straight out because of people. You don't know where your bullet's going. Shooting down is always a better thing. The deer should probably come out on the edge of this brush and stand in here. You probably wouldn't even hardly be able to see anything but the head. But getting just elevated a little bit, you can kill them. Let's get them. Let's get them. Alright, All right, good luck guys. Oh, 
I did find some nice size 12 boot prints. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's been through there already. Yeah. Kind of sucks because that's that's about usually pays off with some action. But we've been having a lot of that this year. Got to see a pheasant, some blue jays. Yeah, if that pheasant had antlers, I had them. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, time's money. Let's go to the next spot. Ticket up there does not look like a doe. It's probably about 175 yards out, and I can see yeah. his tines shining in the sunlight as he had his head down, shaking, eating the grass. So I went. Went red, grabbed my camera, I climbed up in the kid's treehouse. <laughs> I'm sitting there filming this thing. He's a 10 pointer. 10 for 10. I think he's his uh, his right brow tine is split. On the video, you can see it a lot better because I get him from every angle. He's swinging his head around. Another doe came down out of bedding and he swinged and looked at that. And then the, the doe that was hot, she went back into the woods. It's cool footage though, I get him walking because there's snow all over oh, the yeah. trees. Yeah. So you could see his rack clear as day walking through the woods as he makes his way down the transition. So uh, one guy's got to be in those poplars somewhere real high where you can see everything down into this grass. You could probably go with Aaron and find some place where you can get in a tree and film. You want to push? How, how so then show him on the map what to do. You're going to basically you're going to go where he is. This dike comes to T. Yeah. Drop down along that dike over by those poplars way over there. He'll show you where. Okay. And you're going to walk to this dike on the other side. The whole, the whole dike. And walk up through this grass. And we'll all regroup right over here someplace. The deer have been, uh, we've been jumping them as before we even get into the marsh. And I think they don't want to be on the ice. So they're up on the higher ground. So we're going to attempt to drive higher ground now and uh, see if that works. I mean, we've been jumping them like crazy on the high ground, going to our spots, so the marsh isn't producing like it usually does. Just change up our plan a little bit, and, and we'll see. You gotta go all the way around, so might as well get going. Oh, let's go, move it. You'll yeah. hear us. Uh, 35 shots. <laughs> I hope. Was that you guys shooting? Yeah. No. No, it was Mario and oh, good under. Well, uh, still fresh. You get a good story out of Mario. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be a good one. <laughs> I can uh, run around and get your uh, I can hear him. your uh, pack and uh, my stand. Yeah. Okay. We just drove this section, and I came back to get uh, Jake's pack and my stand. And I looked down right in our tracks where it wasn't before. There's a set of tracks sneaking out of here from when we were driving, going out the back door, that are huge. Look at this, it's a four finger walking track. He just snuck through here. <laughs> Looks like a horse print. Is that something? Well, I was sitting in that little uh, ash tree right there, one stick up, and the two fawns were leading, and the mama doe was hanging behind, so I put it right on her. She dropped, then I turned onto the second one, and I squeezed and my gun went click. And I flipped and I looked at my gun and there was two bullets jammed in my action in the action of the gun. Right right on top of our tracks. Uh, Sometime when we were doing this drive, something snuck out the back of the track like that. Oh great, that was I fit my whole hand in and it's walking, so it snuck. Mm. It went right up our trail. Right where we all standing grouped, it went right through there. It was so heavy it cut right into the grass. All right, so even though we didn't have a ton of action in those two days, it was really fun hunting with the Hunting Beast crew. And I know they got on a lot of deer later in the week, so we'll leave a link to their channel down below. Make sure you guys subscribe to them. I think they'll have a deer drive video of their own coming out soon. But I guess the most interesting things I took away from spending those two days with them is how lethal that stepladder can be and that tripod combination where there's no trees where you can get elevated and see into those cattails and stuff like that. So that's a really good option if you don't have any trees. And also how quickly they adjusted to the deer not being in some of the lower ground that they were used to them being in year after year. With the water being halfway frozen this year, the deer didn't seem to want to be out there so much because they were breaking through the ice all the time. So once we shifted to the higher ground, we got into deer and started killing some. But now we're going to jump to later that week and I was back in an area where I grew up hunting with a big group of people that we hunt with every year just after Thanksgiving. And it's just a bunch of me and my buddies that get together and we try to get some meat for the freezer. This particular drive that I'm going to show you is one that we do every year and it seems like every year a big buck sneaks out the back 
either before we get started or right as we're getting started. So this year my buddy Aaron and I tried to sneak to the back corner that all those deer seemed to escape from before everybody started the drive. And we talked about trying to pull a Dan Enfelt and bring a step ladder back in there, but we knew that we were probably gonna jump deer on the way back in there, so we wanted to have both hands free in case we needed to take a shot at something. So we put the stands on our backs and started sneaking in there. So I watched that deer stand up when we were walking in and it stood up and it looked completely the opposite direction. And when it whipped its head around and looked at us, it was only 30 yards away and it started to take off and that's when I took the shot. And he was so close that all I did was put the crosshairs right behind his shoulder, pulled the trigger, and pretty much right after I pulled the trigger, we could hear him crashing through the marsh. So we walked up to where I shot at him, found a bunch of hair and just marked it with the orange hat. Then we just continued to move up to the trees that we wanted to get posted up in. I was only two sticks up in a tiny little tree, but that's all it takes to be able to see over those cattails and red brush sometimes. And as soon as Aaron got set up, they started the drive. All right, well, we had some action already on the way in. They're about lined up to start pushing this and we jumped another small buck on the way in. So they're definitely in here again this year. Aaron's setting up in a tree stand just to my north. We got a poster on the dike over there, and we got a bunch of guys that are going to run through this red brush out in front of us. It's important to get a little bit of elevation like this. That way, when you're shooting at deer, your bullets are going into the ground. I'm going to start looking and get ready to shoot. I hear one coming. down right there so the drivers are all still right down there I could hear that buck coming through the water came right up to here smelled me and continued on Aaron shot at him when he got on into his opening there I already hit that buck so I wasn't sure if I wanted to shoot that one but then he took a crack at it so I shot at him there and he was just standing up there once he got far enough away from the drivers he felt comfortable enough where he stopped and was making his next decision nice thing is he's down there now we don't have to drag him as far too so i think that's two we got down so far looks like a six pointer but we need some meat we got a bunch of boys here that don't have tags that are filled so they wouldn't be very happy if they heard bucks running by us and we weren't shooting at them had i just been sitting down on the ground i would have never seen that deer standing there he would have been down in this red brush for me so that's another reason we like to get elevated like this Thought about bringing the stepladder in, Dan Infault style, but had we done that, I don't think we would have ever snuck up on that first buck. A lot of people think these deer drives are just people running around through the woods with no plan or no tactics involved, but everything that we try to do is pretty strategic. We haven't ever pushed it this way where we had posters in this back corner, but it always seems like they get out this way, so we're just kind of adjusting to what they normally do, and so far it's working. Had Aaron or I not been here, that deer would have probably just escaped right through here, and the guy that's posting way down there would have never even saw him. Yeah, 
That was fun. <laughs> that was pretty fun. You didn't think I was going to shoot, did you? I did. I couldn't get him. I, I, was, couldn't... I was waiting for your blessing. This red brush was tall. He came out right here in front of me and then smelled yeah, me and I then know. he went. I saw he was right. I Because this red brush is really tall. I mm -hmm. couldn't. I couldn't pick him out of it. This is a decent little buck here that we shot though. This you one shot that a up. one? We both shot at a small one out there, yeah. Have you found yours? No, no we gotta go look. Tyler's still post up there so we can get There's a couple guys. There's some more guys. deer in there though. Oh yeah. Oh. So we got some hair here. The buck stood up. He was looking out that way. Then he looked over, saw us, and started to bolt. And I for sure hit him and it sounded like he might have fell, fallen over right here. The rest of the guys are going to track that other buck. How many do we got on the ground? For sure. Uh, two does for sure right now. And another one. Three. Three, three does. Maybe a buck. And then this one. Hopefully a buck. There he is right here. Yep. Nice buck. Looks like it. Oh, that's a nice one, dude. Heck yeah, it is. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I can't yeah, believe yeah. that rifle did that. Yeah, too. that's the side you would have shot him on, right? Yeah. Well, we got a bunch of deer to take care of. I'll probably just do a right. little follow-up uncut video, but it's getting dark, and we got a couple more to drag out, so we're gonna get to work here. We were wondering why the entry was so big and I did shoot through a little brush and ended up hitting this branch here. You can see where it's freshly broke off and that's where we found all the hair. So we think what happened was that entry hole is so big because the bullet either expanded or started tumbling but it was so close to him. It was only a couple yards in front of him that it didn't affect the shot at all. It's going to be tough to get him out. We didn't bring a knife to get him. <laughs> Boys are out there with a, I think it was a six pointer maybe. And then it sounds like there's two or three does that are stacked up out there. So we got some meat. You're on the berm. You got her across, close to getting across the berm. All right, well, I hope everyone enjoyed this video. I know deer drives can be a little bit controversial, but I hope this video proves how effective they can be and how safe they can be if done right. I've been going with the same group of guys for a bunch of years now, and there are a bunch of guys that I trust to make the safe decision. As long as you know where everybody's at at all times, it can be a really good time. And that's the goal for our group, is just to be safe and have a good time. We're not too concerned about how big the buck that we shoot is or who shoots it. We're just trying to get some meat for the freezer. We got several guys that come from out of state that live in an area that there isn't a lot of deer. So they like to come travel down to Wisconsin. We get some deer on the ground and make sure that they can go home with some venison. And this year was no exception for that. I think we ended up with four does and two bucks on that last drive. So everybody that wanted deer meat got to go home with deer meat. I had a lot of fun making these last two videos. It meant a lot to me that I was able to go home, hunt with my family and friends, which at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. I know the kill video quality wasn't great here, but I hope this video expresses the amount of camaraderie and fun that was had. And I know the deer drive thing isn't for everybody, but I know we have several videos coming down the pipe with wind bumping, still hunting, stuff like that. I know there's gonna be one that's posted tomorrow, so be on the lookout for that. So we appreciate watching and we'll see you on the next one. Slide down, maybe. Okay, that's good. <laughs> <laughs>